In line with the theme of this year's World Environment Day, urban forest could become instrumental in protecting biodiversity and cleaning up the earth at the same time. Friday marks the 46th World Environment Day, a global event coordinated by the United Nations Environment Programme. United Nations Convention to Combat Desertif Desertification Executive Secretary Ibrahim Tau led the most successful global program of capacity building of the 146 developing countries that resulted not just in flattening but reversing the rising curve of ozone layer depletion. Today's World Environment Day finds us all struggling to overcome the disastrous effect of COVID-19. Yet, together, with the understanding that stressing out ecosystems and habitat creates a way in for the next crisis, we come to realize that the lasting solutions we need to rebuild our lives can only come from nature itself. Our environment gives us everything we need, good food, pure water, and clean air. And if you have not realized it, it also gives us good health. However, these structures are not limitless. Our overconsumption and resource intensive production have already altered three quarters of the planet's surface. By exhausting the land that nourishes us, we are destroying ourselves. The endless expansion of the agricultural frontier is directly linked to the loss of natural habitat and the spread of diseases from animals to humans. To recover and rebuild after the crisis, we need to enter into a new social contract for nature. It is a contract that engages individuals, civil societies, states, and the global community outline our responsibilities as the custodians of natural resources and recognize that our future, our economic growth, and the health of our environment are interdependent. We must understand that the choices we make as we emerge from the crisis will define our development path for it ahead. The recovery can only be sustainable if it is green. Managing land wisely, changing the way we produce and consume food, enabling circular economies and creating conscious, eco-conscious jobs are the clear milestones on our way to restore the balance between our prosperity and the planet's ability to support us. In the wake of the pandemic, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification will continue working with its 197 parties to build back better and create a more resilient future through preventing land degradation, harnessing the potential of sustainable land management, and protecting fragile ecosystems. Happy World Environment Day. Joining us now is environmentalist Desmond Maje Kodumi. Thank you very much for joining us. Great, happy to be here. How well would you say we're faring when it comes to um, the environment, protecting it as a nation? As a nation, I think is definitely not uh, faring the way she should be. We're a long way away, but we're not the only nation. Uh, all the other nations on Earth, every single nation on Earth, are not doing what they need to do. It's getting really serious. It's been classified as the most important issue facing humanity. Okay? And this pandemic that we're seeing right now, it was predicted. It was predicted over eight years ago. Scientists told us that if we continued this onslaught on the biodiversity, on the various uh, areas where they live, on this terrible, terrible marketing of wildlife, we're going to unleash zoonotic pandemic. And lo and behold, that's what happened. The same scientists, a larger group of them are telling us if we continue with this massive pollution of the air, we're going to unleash unstoppable and catastrophic consequences from climate change. So we're not doing nearly enough. We've started to do a few things, and that's good. But we need to take this particular COVID pandemic as a warning, as a warning. Nature is reacting. You see, nature gives back whatever you give to her. No, na nature is not like God who can forgive you all the time. Nature gives you back whatever you sow into nature. She gives it back to you. So if you're going to sow destruction 
into her life forms, she's going to destroy that which is destroying her life forms. It's as simple as that. So okay. we need to do a lot more. I believe we will. We have some pretty enlightened people in the governmental system. Okay, and just for, you know, so we know what we are doing, what are some of the areas that you believe we've done well and the areas that you think we need to actually focus to improve? Very good question. Very good question. Uh, Lagos State has, has done pretty well with waste disposal, and that's pretty important. You know, if you don't dispose your waste effectively, it's going to cause terrible pollution, especially in your groundwater and eventually even your riverine and sea systems. So Lagos has kick-started that, and they seem to be doing it quite aggressively. Fantastic. On the federal level, uh, it's been a dismal failure until quite recently, when the president himself declared that Nigeria is now going to do massive tree planting. So we're going to plant 25 million trees, and they seem to be quite serious about it. Uh, part of the uh, COVID uh, recovery is to regenerate our agricultural system. And if that goes in the direction of planting economic trees, then it's a double whammy. So there's hopeful signs that the awareness of the reality and the gravity of the problem is finally sinking in to the decision makers. So we are doing now talking the talk and hopefully we'll start walking the walk. But we need to start walking that walk very, very quickly. You know, the, the scientists that are warning us, they're not fools. They know what they're saying. They're basing it on pure science. You know, I'm holding a device in my hand. If I remove my fingers, the device will drop. Why does it drop? Because science tells us there is a gravitational pull. Okay, pure science is telling us we can no longer continue to damage the environment the way we're doing it. We need to revive our forests. We need to stop this awful wildlife trade. And we need to stop the pollution. The pollution is too much. Do you know that yesterday was the most polluted day that mankind has ever faced, despite the fact that the COVID lockdown has reduced air pollution? We've emitted more pollution into the atmosphere than we've ever done in our history on this earth. They can't continue okay. this way. It's not sustainable. And we'll get hit pretty hard. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't slap your mama. And nature is the ultimate mama, you know? So All right, let's, 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 take a let's look. be very patient. Let's take a look. At the, there was a video we just watched from the UN Secretary General where he warned that nature, like you are also echoing, is sending us a clear message. My question would be, how can we be deliberate in protecting nature as opposed to harming it now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very, very good question. And he, 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 his message is spot on. It's spot on. I have a lot of hope for us as Nigerians because we are a God-fearing nation. We are a God-believing nation. You know, we, we express a lot of love for our God, who is the creator of the, of the heaven and the earth. And in the two major religions, it's very, very clear. You know, the, in the Holy Quran, we are turned as caliphs, caretakers, and there's many, many other references in the Holy Quran. In the Holy Bible, it's also very clear. We're put in the garden to care for it. And in the Holy Bible, the Creator says His creation is very good. So it just means that we need to get into that realization that, hey, if we love the Creator of this creation, which is very good, which is our life support system, as the Secretary General of the United Nations said, it gives us our water, our air, our food, and everything else, then it kind of makes sense to really, really start concentrating on caring for that creation, you know, even if it means sacrificing a little bit of profit, which is what the problem has all been about because of the greed motivation to just keep on driving the profit, driving the profit. We've been ignoring the scientists who are telling us you can't continue down this road. It's not self-sustaining and it's going to mortgage not just your future, not just our future, but our children and our grandchildren's future. We have no right to do that. And I don't believe that we will do that because we love our God and we love our children. Amen. And then there's just basic things that we can do, you know, stop the pollution, ensure that the decision makers put renewable energy systems into place and reforest more, more, more trees, massive, massive, massive tree planting. And then Nigeria needs to go back to the land, back to agriculture. We're an agricultural nation, for God's sake. All right. Thank you very much, Desmond, for your insight. And please stay safe.